Hey, what's up, guys? It is Dan from the MMA cast, and today I'm joined by someone who probably has one of the coolest nicknames in mixed martial arts. But what's something that's even cooler is he has two finishes in under 20 seconds in the UFC. Today I'm joined by Semi the Jedi, aka Matthew Samuelsberger. How are we doing today, brother? Hey, what's up, man? Doing well. How about yourself? Pretty good, man. No complaints here whatsoever. And obviously, no complaints. You got a fight booked against AJ Fletcher, if I'm not mistaken. Another, you know, insane fighter you see is knockout on the Contender Series. Can I just talk about uh, kind of how this matchup came to fruition and, you know, what you've been doing in your downtime since your last fight against Martin Sano? Yeah, man. So this fight kind of came to fruition within the like the last month, I'd say. Um, I was kind of on the shelf. Um, after the Martin Sano knockout, we at first we were like, yo, let's hop back, back hop back in quick. And then um, and then my coaches and everybody was like, hey, why don't we take like a little break? Not a, like a crazy long break, but take a little break, really get back in the gym and like sharpen up, learn some new tools. Get, just get to work on a lot of things and then let's book a fight for like you know late february early march or something like that so that's ended what ended up happening um luckily so basically yeah man uh went in september got the knockout real quick um it was a really really good camp that i put together and then basically since then man i've been right back in the gym uh staying busy and just adding new tools to my uh to my repertoire man and uh from an offensive and defensive uh defensive perspective Definitely, so, and obviously, um, you know, something you mentioned is going into the gym and sharpening up those tools. Something that I feel like a lot of people don't kind of consider when you, they see the pedigree of, you know, work that you've put together in the UFC thus far, you know, they see these quick finishes, but also we've seen your durability, you know, we've seen your fight versus Carlton Minus, we've seen your fight against Chaos Williams, while that didn't go your way, you know, we still see the durability and, you know, the well put together defensive, you know, skill set you've got in the clinch and just being able to um, kind of recognize, uh, obviously, uh, kind of the flaw not the flaws necessarily but being able to recognize where you need to improve or where you need to sharpen the skill set is something super important i feel like when you see guys that are get racking together these quick knockouts not kind of recognizing that there is still more work to put in that's something amazing to kind of hear and i'm excited to see you know against aj you know that's a young guy in the division you know you've got yourself a very young guy as well i know people like to say you know oh 28 this is that but you know you're right there you know in my opinion top 15 guy as is uh, just kind of run us through, obviously, the Martin Sano fight, as you mentioned. A bit of, you know, uh, shit-talking from Sano's and you know, or not shit-talking, but, you know, kind of like a disrespect with the handshake thing. Uh, kind of run us through, obviously, uh, walking into the weigh-ins, how you were feeling, or if there was any, you know, built-up animosity from his side coming into that fight. Uh, so not really any built-up animosity. Like, honestly, I didn't even say a single word to Martin or, like, any, any of, like, his corners or anything like that, but... I knew that he was coming from Nick Diaz's camp. So like usually, you know, like birds are the same fe feather flock together mm -hmm. type of thing. So I had this idea in my head that um, he would probably take some sort of like some sort of that Diaz style stance where it's like, I'm not going to give you respect until you earn it or like fight me. And then maybe I'll give you a little bit of respect after. But even then, like I'm still the champ. Um, so I was kind of expecting a little bit of disrespect. Um, and that's just part of the game. Like it wasn't, I didn't take it personal or anything like that. Um, but then going into the, the weigh-ins, you know, I knew obviously we we're going to face off. And the face off for me is like a sacred thing. Um, like I don't, I don't buy into it too much, meaning like I don't like look into someone's eyes and I'm like, I can see right through you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think there is something to be said for standing face to face with, with your opponent and staring into their eyes and, and just kind of like getting a read on them. Um, so when I walked out for the ceremonial weigh-ins, um, we did the face off and then every weigh-in I always offer like a handshake or a fist bump. It's just something I do. Um, what's funny, cause even as I was like, I for a split second, like for a half second, I like thought about not doing it because in my head I was like, he's probably not even gonna fucking shake my hand. But I was like, fuck it, I'll do it anyway. And of course like put the hand out and then rejected uh, but no man that just kind of tickled me uh and it got me excited for the fight so one thing about me um uh, like i'm always coming into every fight to to throw down uh and and to entertain people and to put on a good performance but there's something about people getting or me getting disrespected or people 
whether it's shit talk or just how their demeanor is <clears throat> being disrespectful, it just kind of like amps me up a little bit, not in like a bad way, but it amps me up a little bit and it excites me and it kind of like turns the, helps turn the switch on a little bit more for me. Um, so if anything, I welcome it. Um, but sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. That's for sure. No, yeah, definitely. No, at the weigh-ins, I love you mentioned like the kind of like amps you up. Cause like at the weigh-ins, you kind of see like the shrug. You're like, okay, like, okay, it is what it is. And then you're like, all right, let's go. And I love, I love that kind of mindset. That's like, but like, you know, afterwards you, it's just crazy. Cause like, it's the most unassuming thing, you know, like at the weigh-ins you go in, you're staring at your opponent, you're kind of just getting a read on how the weight cut went for them and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, you mentioned the Nick Diaz Academy, obviously they kind of play into the heel role, but like even Nick Maximov, like he's from the Nick Diaz Academy, just like kind of how they, that's kind of how their guys are. So I just think it's like the way it put it, it would, the way that whole set of circumstances put itself together it's just kind of re- like it's really funny to see, but it's also kind of like holy shit that just happened type of moment. Yeah, <laughs> trust me, man. Whenever so when I connected with the right on him and I saw him go down, I was like, oh, he's done. But uh, like it, some people asked me this, and I actually caught a little flack from some people for the follow up shot that I threw on him that like really put him to mm-hmm. sleep. Um, but it was just like one of those things where like I, in a fight, man, like I until I'm like. Until I can clearly see a ref waving his hands in front of me or like, you know what I mean? I'm locked in. So, um, so it was just, yeah, dude, like going in for that follow-up shots, like I wasn't even thinking, man, but like, uh, so, like some people were like, Oh, was that for, for him not shaking your hand? I was like, no, to be honest, man, I was just in the fucking zone. No, yeah, definitely. So, it's just five fans, you know, like they can be fickle at times and like, they're kind of like, you know, one day they love you, one day they hate you kind of like thing. And, it doesn't matter. It's like the, when the ref pulls you off, that's when the fight's over. You just keep going until then. But something that actually like interests me a lot is, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, one of the most, if not, you know, sickest, in, sickest nicknames in the game right now, Semi the Jedi. I know um, you mentioned in other previous interviews or previous like uh, columns that, you know, uh, you started getting the nickname Semi because your last name was too long for some people. But I, I'm kind of interested. Where did you get like the, the Jedi added to it? Like, is that kind of just like, oh, it, it went with it and stuck? Or are you like a big Star Wars fan? Uh, so I am a big Star Wars fan, but like, uh, dude, the Star Wars universe is like, I feel like gotten just wider and wider with mm-hmm. like, you know, like the Mandalorian and like all this other stuff that they're putting out. And like uh, Marvel's been putting out some comics, uh, Star Wars comics that I've been reading. So um, if I were to be tested on Star Wars knowledge, I probably wouldn't do the greatest. But like in terms of like the Jedi culture and stuff like that, like I'm pretty, pretty homeworked up on it. Um, but yeah, dude, so semi was where it all started. I was like six years old <clears throat> on a football field. So like my last name, Selmsberger, is a real long one. It's hard, actually hard to pronounce for people. Um, so my coaches were getting sick of calling me that. And they're like, all right, we're going to call you semi. So that's kind of where it first started. And it was just literally like semi, like a shortened version of something. Um, and then I started like <clears throat> kind of getting into my stride with my style in football. And my style in football was to lay people out and like make big hits and make big plays. So it kind of started to transcend from like, oh, shortened version of the last name. But like, dude, this dude hits like a fucking semi Mack truck like going 100 miles an hour on the freeway. So that's kind of like, that kind of built another level onto the name. And then I kind of carried the whole semi through my high school and into my college uh, football career. And that's all people really knew me by was semi. Like I was more likely to like, if someone was like semi, I'd be able to turn and know that someone's calling my name. But if someone was like, hey, Matt, 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 and then I'd find like, oh, hey, right, that's my name. <laughs> so, um, Semi was always just kind of, honestly, kind of like a replacement for my first name. Um, just because I played so many sports and I was always around like athletics and just other teammates and stuff like that. So it just kind of stuck with me. But then I got into college <clears throat> and I made my first Instagram account. I think it was like my freshman year of college. So I was thinking of like names on Instagram and I was like, se- I had Semi down. I was like, all right, Semi, Semi, Semi. And I'm like, just randomly like you had that eureka light bulb moment i was like semi semi the jedi I was like, that's pretty cool that's pretty rad that's pretty so i was like yeah whatever and i didn't think anything about it but like for a split second when i first like made my instagram and made my name that i was like ah that'd be an interesting ring name 
I was like, but I like, I was like, not now, but like maybe later down the road, I'll, I'll make that my, my cage name. Um, but the whole Jedi part of it is just kind of like, uh, kind of encompasses like, uh, like that nerdy, like scientific kind of like spiritual side to me, I guess you could say, because a Jedi, a Jedi is really the kind of like, at least in my eyes, like more of like a spiritual warrior. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not like a religious warrior, but like a spiritual warrior. Like within you know their I mean? element oh. type of thing. Like I get you. Yeah. Like in their element, mm-hmm. kind of like doing their own thing, harnessing this type of energy type of it. Yeah, I get you. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that's kind of like what, like that half that I put on semi is my alter ego. Uh, semi is a dark, um, like a darker, more negative, like uh, version of myself. Um, so, like, I, like have you ever heard of like Michael Jordan? Like some of these like uh, superstars and mm-hmm. athletics, they talk about like sometimes they go into like you got to go into like the dark. Yeah, like Mama, you know I mean? like Kobe. Like, Kobe comes to mind when I think about like when Kobe's yeah, like Mama so, mentality and Kobe are two different people. Mm-hmm. Like that's so, I feel like. Semi is like this part of me that kind of re- represents like the darkness inside of me. Um, semi is the one who would rob a bank. Semi is the one who would who would do something stupid. But the Jedi, the other side of me, the light in me, uh, is like the balancing act in between the two. It's like my my conscience, my morals, and stuff like that, which is all predicated on how I was raised. I came up in a really awesome family. Um, not a perfect family by any means, but um, a good family. Uh, you know, I had my mom and my dad in my life um, and they raised me to be like a moral person and they raised me to have like a, a, a heavy conscience, which has helped me uh, because I feel like, and again, I'm not a perfect person, but when I'm talking to people or conversing with people or like meeting people or, you know, any of that stuff, I'm always kind of like putting myself in other people's shoes and i don't know i guess you could say like that part of me the jedi part of me is like that that positive that light uh that loving side of me um so when you add semi and the jedi together you know what i mean like the the possibilities are limitless because you have like some people might be a little bit too on the light side and some people might be a little bit too on the dark side but semi the jedi is a master of both light and dark and i mean i will i won't show it yet but I have a brand new tattoo on my back that represents all of that. I've got a, I have an, I have a tattoo question actually, but we'll get into mm-hmm. that. I mean, honestly, that's like, that's remarkable. You know, like it, it, you don't really see the, I feel like sometimes the element of like the nickname is almost kind of forgotten, but semi the Jedi is almost like a, a perfect uh, kind of parallel into your fighting style. You know, like the semi is the guy with, you know, the power in his hands, the knockout. But then the Jedi is the patient striker who is able to cl- get in the clinch, is able to kind of like uh, maneuver around his opponents beautifully and able to manage that power in his hands. So it kind of plays parallels into both the fighting. And as you mentioned, obviously, with not, my, I myself, I'm not perfect. But, you know, not, I mean, no human is really perfect. But being able to kind of find that balance and harmony within yourself, that kind of brings a, a different perspective to life even. And just to be able to kind of... Uh, draw conclusions and connections to that nickname is something you know amazing to see oh yeah man for sure gotta find the levels and meaning meaning is just another word for why right and how many times do you hear in like particularly combat sports or really anything you're trying to be successful at it's like what's your why if your why is strong then you know what i mean you'll probably you'll probably be able to see it through to the end but if you don't have any rhyme or reason for doing it man like probably not going to stick around too too long no, yeah, most definitely, and obviously reason. Like one of the things that stands out to me actually is, uh, you mentioned you play football. I mean, I was looking at uh, some of like the statistics. Obviously, uh, the website or the college websites or university websites usually have like the photos, and then I see like this two hundred five Matt Semmelsberger who's like looking like Jason Momoa. You know, like a tr- you mentioned you hit like a truck. I'm like, holy fuck, this dude does not look like the semi the Jedi that we see in the UFC. It's just like this big muscular football dude. And then obviously you mentioned um, finding your why, and something that stands out to me that a lot of people may not know is that uh, if I'm if I remember correctly, you actually majored in criminal justice as a you know college student, and you dropped out in, within a semester of getting the degree, which to me stands out like um, because usually like you know how you say like if you see the vi- you say you see the vision you see it through to the end, but being able to kind of make that transition into fighting stood out to me specifically like seeing like. 
if I want to get successful here, I got to kind of sacrifice this here and finding that harmony and balance. So kind of just uh, obviously run us through where your interest for criminal justice began. Do you kind of see uh, maybe even after your fighting going back into that field or avenue? And just like uh, obviously, yeah, the, it's like a difficult, not difficult transition to kind of think of, but like uh, kind of like the thought process behind making a significant decision like that. Because obviously that's not an easy decision to make. I imagine, I can't even imagine the shoes you were in, you know, when you had to make that decision, you know, tough decision, obviously. So kind of just run us through how you were feeling uh, when, you know, that kind of all surfaced. Yeah, so um, there was one, there was a couple, there was like two, I should say one big event that happened mm -hmm. and then one very important person that I met in college that kind of talking about like I was kind of on the edge of do I stay or do I go, do I stay or do I, sorry. <laughs> you're good, you're good. It's <laughs> a good song. <laughs> um, yeah, right. So uh I'll talk, uh, I'll talk about the event first, because chronologically, right. this would make more sense. So I went through my first couple years of college. Um, when I first went into college, my idea was to ball out, make a lot of big highlights, and hopefully maybe get a shot uh, either getting drafted in the NFL or maybe even just getting a tryout with an NFL team or even, you know, maybe getting signed to like the CFL and working my way up to the NFL, you know what I mean? As a lot of guys have done in the past. So the first couple of years was like a big culture shock for me because like I come from like a pretty blue collar, like like suburban type of area. And Maryland's really weird because it can go like, it could be suburbs, one place, and then you drive an hour and you're in a big city. So um, uh, I lost my train of thought for a second. So anyways, um, I was in college and I went to this school that was like, I, and I had a scholarship to play there. If I didn't have a scholarship, I wouldn't have been able to afford it because it was like 45 grand a year or something oh, like shit. that. Yeah, college go, expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Very expensive. So um, this was like a pretty prestigious, prestigious academic mm -hmm. school like um, in Marist and they are very, very prestigious. Um, but the type of people there um you know a lot more like well off from you know richer families and stuff like that and i met a lot of really cool people there i'm not i'm not saying like rich people are snobby or anything like that but obviously that stereotype is a real thing for some people so i don't know man i just didn't really like vibe with a lot of the a lot of the culture at that school because it was a lot of like go to class go out and party wake up and do it all again you know what oh, i mean yeah. so my first couple of years was like kind of like a uh, a battle between like okay dude you want to go to the nfl like you should be working in the weight room and not going out at night and it was like i was kind of bouncing between these two lifestyles um because you know i'll be honest like college was fun man uh yeah, especially like my freshman year when you're like you've been in your house so your whole life and now like you can do whatever pretty, pretty much whatever you want so um anyways i get like a few years in and my football career in college is not going near how i thought it would be going um so by my junior year i was like kind of starting to pick up some steam the first couple of years was like i had like this battle between you know cultures and then finally i was like fuck it i was like i need to focus completely on my football career and school work and like that's it so i started building up a lot of like uh, a lot of momentum and i was doing really well uh and this i want to say it was summer Summer going into my junior year of college, uh, this is when the event happened. So I put through a really good off season. Uh, so after my sophomore uh, season, we had our off season and I did really well with everything. So going into my junior season, I was back home during the summer working with one of my best friends uh, for a flooring company. We were just driving like flooring construction uh, materials out to different job sites and we just drop it off go back, load up, and then just kind of do that all day. So it was my homie, Kurt. Uh, we've been best friends for, gosh, man, we were, we were buddies ever since like kindergarten, first grade. So um, I kind of got to reconnect with him because I hadn't seen him for a few years because um, we were both been in college. So I reconnected with him over the whole summer and we were just working every day, lugging all these fucking heavy ass ceramics and shit. So, um, it was really good to reconnect with them and and then like the when there was like a week left 
before I went back to school, we were doing, I think we had just gotten done like work for the day. And we had like one more day after that. And then I was done. So the next day, um, or before the, before the next day of work, which would have been my last, he was like, Hey man, uh, do you want to ride to work in the morning? And at first I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally take a ride. And then I like started walking back to my car and then it hit me. I was like, Oh wait, my mom made me a dentist appointment in the morning. So I was like, yo, I was like, I can't make it. I was supposed to have this dentist appointment. So I told him I couldn't make it. Uh, so I didn't need a ride. And, um, so I wake up the next morning, I go to my dentist appointment and I get back home and my mom's like, Hey, can you cut the grass, uh, for your dad? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I hop on the mower and I'm like, you know, doing my thing. And then like a half hour goes by and then I look up and I have like a pretty big side yard at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. and I look over and both my mom and my dad are standing like basically at the top of the yard, right where our driveway is. And my dad's got like his, his hands in his head. And my mom just has like this look on her face and I'm like, something's up. Mm -hmm. So I get off the mower and I go up to him and I'm like, what's up? And they, there's no easy way to break it. They just came, came right out and said, they're like, Kurt Neubauer died in a car crash this morning. So yeah, man, that just kind of like shook my whole world up, bro. I was like one of my best friends that I ever had. Um, and I spent like the whole day before he died with him. And uh, we even, we were talking about like fuck, life. Bro, I'm about to tear death. up, man. Holy, who the, oh fuck. Yeah, so it was, uh, dude, I was, I was fucked up in the head for a while, man. And it was like, it was already bad enough that he was like my best friend, you know what I mean? And like, we got to reconnect and like we had like all these great conversations and our last conversation it, we left it on such a positive note mm -hmm. you know what i mean talking about our dreams and our goals and stuff like that and then you know you wake up the next day and he's gone um so that that was like a big event in my life because it really taught me that you don't know when you're gonna go man yeah. so you really should be living your life to be happy and do what you love and that as harsh of a lesson as it was uh looking back on it now it was kind of one of those things where like um it it really helped push me over the edge in a good way towards like yo stop all this bullshit. No, yeah, 100 you need to focus on what you really really want in this life because nothing's guaranteed you could be gone tomorrow um so that was the big event that happened. And that was a summer going into my junior year of college. And then that same year, we had um, a dude come in uh, from Compton, California or Carson, California. I'd, I'd have to ask see exactly. Um, but he lived in South Central LA. His name is Kylan Moore. And this is the this is the person. So at the event and this is the person. So Kylan uh, is from South Central um, Los Angeles uh from a very like gang ridden community um and his story i highly implore anybody watching this and hearing this name kylan moore c-a-y-l-i-n-m-o-o-r-e uh go up and look up his story because it is i, I not i can't inspirational is like not, not even the right word for it um this guy battled through you know what i mean being around um a very, very low income family. His dad wasn't around. Um, his mother, bless her soul, she's one of the most loving, kind people I've ever met. Um, she had some things happen to her that basically put her uh, in a bed and, and unable to do anything. Um, and she basically had to become the man of the house at a very, very young age. So um, when I met this dude, he had like, he had such like proper manners. This dude was so respectful, so kind, but the dude, and the dude worked his ass off. He was like, I don't think there was a single semester where C got below a 4.0. 4 like this, this dude was just like a straight A student, super disciplined. You know what I mean? It's just like um, very, you would think from the outside looking in, a very uncharacteristic from the background that he comes from. Um, so I became really close with him my junior year and then leading into my senior year 
we were like best friends. Um, at least you'd say like in college, he was like my best friend. So I started kind of like catching an attitude from this dude, Kylan, because all these dudes would be going out on a Friday night or a Thursday night, whatever, going out. And I'm talking about people from like even our team would be going out to party and get drunk and this and that. And he's like, yo, Sima, we'll go hit the weight room. I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. So I basically started, or I should say, I stopped going out like completely. Um, I focused completely on just like getting after it in the gym. And honestly, man, I kind of just caught like an attitude uh, from this dude, Kylan, man. And he's like, his story goes so deep and so wide, man. Like, I wish I could put it all into words right now, but it'll probably take me a few hours. Um, but this dude ended up uh, transferring out of Marist. And this was my senior year while this is going on. He's like, yo, Semi, I got to talk to you, man. And this is like my best friend from college. He's like, hey, man, I'm transferring out. Uh, I'm going to TCU in Texas mm -hmm. to finish out my uh, degree. And um, just a little background on that. C, C was our quarterback. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to like harp too much on it, but our coaches never really gave him a good shot, never gave him an opportunity to go out and like play. And we were having a lot of issues with our offense and quarterbacks and such and such. And he did, they would just never give him a shot. And it just blew my mind even to this day, why they never let him go in there and, and, and give it a shot. But um, so anyway, he decided to transfer out because he wanted to actually try to get some playing time. Uh, and he just, it wasn't uh, the right fit for him. So oh, yeah. I was talking to him about it and he was like, yeah, man, he's like, so I'm transferring out uh, after this semester. And this was my fall semester, kind of like right after the football season ended. So you have that little bit of uh, fall semester time left. So he's like, yeah, I'm going to TCU. And then we just sat down and had this long conversation and the whole leaving school for fighting thing was already heavy on my mind. So when I heard him tell me he was leaving, I was like, almost like it was like a sign from God. I was like, well, if he's leaving, I'm leaving. And I didn't like make my decision right there, but I talked to him and we had a very long conversation and uh, he was nothing but inspirational and motivational, man. Basically it was along the lines of, yo, you got to do what you want to do, man. Like, and he knew about Kurt, he knew about my, my best friend and stuff. And, you know, it was right along the same line, same lines of, hey, man, you don't know. Nothing's guaranteed in life, so why not go out and do this? You can always go back to school, but you can't always be a, a MMA fighter. So that was the person. Um, and obviously, you know about the event. Those were the two big things that kind of, like, tipped me, I should say, even pushed me past um, all the, like, fear and anxiety and, like, because – you know, like you mentioned before, it was like, it's such a long road. And uh, to see it all through, you need a powerful why. And uh, I had, I had, and still do have one of the most powerful whys. And, you know, it's like something that us as humans were forgetful of things, but then you get these reminders. And then it's like, when you get these reminders, it's almost like it just sends like a crazy, like shockwave through your brain where you're like, oh yeah, I remember this. I remember that, and, you know, every little connection that it has. So for me, man, um, I've always had a lot of reminders in life that kind of bring me back to those days uh, right before I left college where it was like, um, I lost my best friend and then, you know, I made a new one and then he was going off to do his own thing. and just the, his whole background and um, just the life experience I gained, man, from, from meeting different people. Um, and, you know, everyone's got different goals and, and, and uh, aspirations and stuff like that, man. So it was, I, I always joke around with the man, I say like this whole thing's been like a crazy psychedelic trip, man. Mm -hmm. Just like highs and lows, highs and lows. And then like, you know what I mean? Sometimes it's right. real jumpy and then obviously you find uh, find the balance and it starts smoothing out. So I feel like nowadays I've been able to keep that balance act uh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, you know, we're humans. This is a crazy life. So um, you got to be ready to bounce up and down. No, yeah, most definitely. And obviously, thank you very much, Matt, for, you know, telling us this story. You know, like for me, it's just crazy to even like 
as a you know i'm like significantly younger than a lot of the other interview guys you know like uh just fresh out of high school just having to understand like are coming into the realization that you know life is short and being having to maximize and understanding you know the opportunity you're presented with like for me like i never expected like my page to even get big you know like but like that cat the catalyst of like fuck you don't know like what's gonna happen and even like something i want to open up to you about since you opened up to me like uh i had a like when i was driving like one day you know like we don't really take these things for like to into perspective but one day just like a simple day i was driving i went to like the verizon store right and like I was like, okay, like, it's a pretty normal day, right? I went on, like, oh, my phone's not working. Then, you know, like, I'm driving my car, you know, like, I just got, like, even this, like, if people don't even take into for granted, like, people don't even understand, like, how much they have. Like, I had just gotten, like, uh, for my graduation gift, like, I'd gotten, like, a brand new car. And that brand new car, like, I'm just driving that car, you know, it's like a, it's like a nice, uh, like, brand new car, uh, like, 2016 Mustang or whatever. Like, we got, uh, like, a pretty low price in the pandemic, surprisingly enough, and, you know, like I'm driving and the next thing you know, a car speeds off the freeway, runs a red and T-bones my car. My car spins three times and I nearly fall in a ditch. And like, Ew. by the grace of God, you know, like I was able to come out of that with zero injuries. And just looking back at you, just looking back at situ that situation and taking into perspective, you know, what could have happened? Like, fuck, that could have been really bad. Uh, it's kind of brought in a new perspective to even myself at such a young age to where, you know, none of this is guaranteed and it's given me like a newfound sense of motivation to be able to to do what i love to do which is to speak with the fighters to be able to flush out these stories and to be able to you know open up and learn more about you guys for who you are not just the fighters because i feel like that's something that you know a lot of modern day media outlets and like interviewers they kind of like forget the sense of humanity that comes with speaking with the fighters like we're all humans at the end of the day you know i'm not speaking to the mixed martial artist matt semi the jedi semelsberger i'm speaking to matthew semelsberger the human being which is to me the most important thing and i just can't thank you enough for you know fleshing out the story and i think this is the type of dialogue that needs to be had between fighter and interviewer is understanding the why and understanding the background from which these fighters have arisen from and they've been able to surface and become the people that they are in the octagon and out of the octagon oh yeah man it's like um like the work the hard work is one element of it man uh but there's so many elements that go into fighting so i think that's very what you just said kind of reminded me of that man it's just like there's the element of work and then there's the element of like the mind and then obviously like depending on what people believe you know what i mean like there's an the element of like that spirit you know what i mean i think that that kind of attaches itself a lot to the to the why to the reasons to the you know the deep deep backgrounds that that every fighter has man and that's the beauty of the sport there's like so many like so much variety so much like um diversity in people and personalities and you know what i mean you can find you can find the the connections between them all for sure um but they are you know as a whole so much different from each other and it's uh it's cool man it's really cool yeah most definitely just as human beings like you're able to find so many similar parallels between yourself and other people so just being able to find the parallels and being able to trace all of these you know obviously these uh, unfortunate circumstances and uh put reasoning and obviously as you mentioned like the why is a key component of like just what we're talking about right now being able to put it all together and being able to make something uh really significant and really motivating out of something that's so unfortunate is a big part about what i why i love doing what i love doing is just being able to take uh lessons that i've learned throughout my life or lessons that i take from fighters like yourself like you know undoubtedly after this after this conversation i'm going to be a very different person just in, in, in life conversation it's ultimately to better each other and just like to me that's that's more important than oh like we see the the same uh media guys like oh how do you feel after that fight like uh you know like i feel like there could be a little bit more of a dynamic and that's just what i appreciate in having these types of conversations oh yeah man that's the real stuff look man i'm uh i think there's a time and place for like talking about like you know what i mean what car you drive or like uh you know like i don't even I really don't find any place for it, but like some people like yeah, no uh, some personalities like talking about, you know, like how much money they're making or like what kind of jewelry they're wearing, you know what I mean? Um, and this and that, like from a materialistic standpoint, I think that's a lot, uh, that takes a lot of the spotlight nowadays, uh, like a lot of like the clout and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. like I said, there's a time and place for it. And then in a way it's entertaining and it, 
I, I can see how it helps like build fights and even like sell fights. But at the same time, I think there's like a whole different population of fight fans who want to see what we're what we're talking about right now. You know what I mean? The the more real, the real genuine, sides of fighting, yeah, yeah, the real sides of fighters. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. I just think there's a place for everything, and I feel like that place needs to be a little bit more defined. And I just under learning about the fighter and being able to, you know, like uh, understanding that the fighter you're speaking with is obviously the most important thing. Like some people don't necessarily enjoy like the questions and whatnot, but something that uh, like stands out to me is like uh, the origins. And obviously, we've been speaking about your origin for quite a bit and understanding where your decision making, your why has come from, and kind of uh, how this motivation of becoming a fighter and transitioning full-time into fighting has sparked for you. But uh, just to kind of change the subject a bit and like a, a little bit more of a lighthearted thing, I don't know if even this is a real, but I know in the UFC uh, website, it mentions, uh, it's like a QA and a section. Something that stood out to me was, um, it said that you were a substitute teacher. I don't know if that's yeah, real. I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, it is, okay, it was real. So I can't even like like begin to imagine like imagine um, substituting like like imagine like oh you're substituting and then like one day like oh the kids like wake up they see like the substitute teachers knocking out dudes on ESPN plus like I can't even imagine like whoa was that like the guy from sixth grade like uh, substituting English now he's knocking dudes out in the UFC like what the fuck like that's wild. It's funny you say that man because I still I live in the Urbana community and uh, I taught substitute taught all over like frederick county which is the county i live in mm -hmm. but particularly urbana which is like who doesn't want to go back to their old place and, yeah, and substitute teach man so i would go back there but uh even nowadays man i'll get kids who have literally graduated and are like full-fledged adults coming up to me like hey dude you you substituted for me in high school or like i was in middle school i was like a, I feel old from you saying that. And B, <laughs> that's really cool. It's good to see you again, man. <laughs> no, yeah, definitely. Like, like to me, because like uh, when I think of like substitute, like I, I had at least the substitute teachers I had, they were like, you know, like none of them were really like the nicest people. I guess like uh, LA, you know, LAUSD and whatnot, like that kind of like that environment. I, I don't know. It's it's like interesting to me because like. You usually don't see that parallel between substitute teacher, like, oh, my substitute teacher from, like, the fifth grade is knocking, like, dudes out in the UFC, like, what the fuck is going on, what is life, and then, and then you see it, and you're like, holy shit, is this real life, but no, like, something like that, that's just, like, really cool to me, that, like, that's, like, a way to give back to the community, I see, like, like, I can see, like, the genuine, like, um, the genuine vibes coming from, like, you mentioning this, like, oh, like, I imagine, like, even now, you're like, oh, I'm in the UFC, fuck it, I'll go back and substitute, why not, you know, like, something like that, like. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah, man, I, I would totally do that. I've actually thought about doing it, man, um, which probably in the future, I'll figure out some sort of way I can maybe, maybe swing it, but um, it's funny, dude. Yeah, so this was maybe probably like a year and a half or like two years before I got signed with the UFC. So I was in the professional game still, and I was substituting. And some of these kids would find out that I'm an MMA fighter. So they're like, oh, can we have your autograph? <laughs> and this was before I was in the UFC. So like, honestly, it was kind of embarrassing for them to ask me because in my mind, I'm like, I'm not really in the UFC or any big event. Cause sometimes I'd be like, they'd be asking me for an autograph and they'd be like, are you in the UFC? Are and I'm like, U yeah, I'm like, no, I'm not in the UFC. I was like, but I was like, I will be in the UFC. And then, you know, some of them would be like, oh yeah, that's cool. And then, you know, kids are savage and just super honest, uh, which I actually appreciated them. Some of them would be like, oh, you're not in the UFC. You suck. <laughs> like, Dude, some of the worst shit talking I got was from, was from students. Kids are brutal, um, man. They're savage. Yeah, dude, kids brutal and just brutally honest um but at the same time i look back on it and i'm like you know what those kids kind of toughen me up mentally a little bit they uh they got me ready for like all the all the naysayers that that are here now and will come um so it's cool man it's uh it's really cool to look back on those substitute teaching days and like you know, I was never the, the greatest substitute teacher in terms of like knowing everything, but you know, I always tried my hardest when I was there. I tried to be a good example to kids and especially when they knew I was an MMA fighter, I, I made sure to not give that like tough, like I'll kick your ass, like attitude to them. I always actually took like the opposite approach. I always tried to play like the positive, like friendly, 
uh, I call, I told everyone to call me Mr. S. So I was known as Mr. Mr. S. S. Yeah. So they'd be, uh, be like, you know, like doing their work and this and that. Like, hey, Mr. S, can I go sit on the on the carpet and do my work? And you know, like some mean substitute would be like, no. I'd be like, uh, like whatever. Say the kid's name is like in Jake or something like that. I'd be like, all right, Jake, tell you what, you can go down on that carpet and you can do your work. I was like, but you start messing around, I'm gonna send you back, man. You know, like in that demeanor, oh, yeah, totally definitely. cool, totally, totally calm. Like, you know what I mean? And of course, being a substitute teacher, you got, you got pressed sometimes. Some days these kids would be going buck wild and I just like, whew, stressful, stressful, stressful working with stressful. kids, man. But very, very fun at the same time. Not very rewarding even, I'd imagine, because like, yeah, it's, it's like a sense of gratification and like sense of satisfaction being able to, to kind of be a positive influence, even like, you know take something that you're working on in your life like I, I can imagine going back and substitute teaching like as you mentioned the interest it'd be very different now because like you go now and you know kids they see they see all the stuff you've been able to accomplish and like I feel like that sense of uh, motivating people is going to be just as strong as even from like when like the kids were brutally honest and like you're not in the UFC yeah like this I'm, I imagine like now you're like I'm in the UFC like but you won't mention that obviously but like the kids the kids come up to you, they're like, oh, you're in the UFC, that's sick. And then you you know what, kid? It is. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's just, like, super cool, man. Like, um, I know I, I, there's a lot of, like, teachers, surprisingly, in the MMA. Like, I know Roxanne Modafferi is, like, a math teacher, I think, or, like, uh, Felicia Spencer I totally was a teacher. That. I think Roxanne yeah, Modafferi taught Yeah, Roxanne, uh, Roxanne was on the 266 car with me, and that was the first time I actually got to, like, see her. Um... And yeah, not that you telling me that you taught math, I'm like, that makes it was either sense. like math or English. And then I think uh, Felicia Spencer was like, a, or I think Felicia Spencer was also a teacher, I think math for sure. Um, but it's just like, there's like a, it's like a, another unique dynamic, like, oh, fight, fighters coming from a teaching background, like, you know, that's like super unique to me, you know, like, uh, especially in Roxanne, like, you know, going out on the debut, you, you see the happy warrior going out and like brawling. And then like, next thing you know, she's teaching math or English. The next thing you're like, Oh <laughs> shit, that's my teacher. Yeah, she just went to war. Oh my that's God. Like my teacher dude. knocked someone out. <laughs> dude, I, I can't, I've had a bunch of kids come up and fucking say like, you're the teacher who knocks people out. <laughs> that's funny, man. Yeah, man. It's that, wholesome to hear. It's super wholesome, dude. That's just like, wholesome. you're the teacher that knocks someone out. Holy crap. <laughs> No man. It's funny uh, too because the the staff gets into it too. That was the crazier part. The kids were all into it, but then even the principals and stuff like that, I thought they'd be getting mad at me for like showing these kids my fights and stuff. They'd be like, "Hey, uh, such and such, uh, whatever student showed me uh, one of your fight videos. Like, you got any more? <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah. That's, like such a, that's such a contrast to like school with me. Like, oh, they see like because normally like teachers, oh, they see a fight. Oh no, 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 stop, 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 break it up, break it up, mm -hmm. break it up. But now, no, that's like. I feel like that's just a district that's just like that's awesome you know we need more of that we need more of that kind of like open sense of trust and that's just like awesome it's like it's wholesome in every sense it is wholesome agreed man agreed and i mean just kind of uh to wrap things up i mean obviously we've mentioned all these things we've spoken about some really amazing topics and been able to you know provide some really interesting insight um do you kind of have like a i know it's like hard i hate i hate asking this question because you know it's like how the fuck do i know but like uh, do you kind of have like a blueprint for 2022, like an ideal blueprint that like, if all things go to plan, like this is like how you'll see the year going both in like a, in like a personal perspective and like a professional perspective almost. Yeah. So, um, from a fighting perspective, uh, I definitely have a blueprint laid out. I feel like it's important to have a plan. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like obviously have some contingency plans along the lines uh so fighting wise man um i took this little break after sano and that break was for no rhyme or reason i wanted to take some time to get better um so basically it was like i guess you could say it's not really an off season but i kind of had like a quote unquote off season so that the regular season is about to start up right now so when i got signed to the ufc i fought my four fights pretty much within a year i think it was like a little over a year so I'm making, I'm planning on having uh, another four fights in about a year span, just like I did when I made my first little run um, with my first four fights. So ideally, I'd like to go in and win every single one of them and uh, 
and then come back in within like the next few months after. So if all goes according to plan, I'd like to get all four of these fights done within within the like the year within a year of like March 12th. So like March 12th would be like the start for mm-hmm. the first fight. So within from March 12th, 2022 to March 12th, 2023, I'd like to get uh, I'd like to get all four fights in, um, but we'll have to see see what happens with everything. So that's from like a fighting perspective. Um, and of course the goal is to win and just keep climbing up. Um, I want, I have a plan and I have goals to, to be like a top ranked fighter and, and climb the rankings, but I'm not like, I'm not gonna, I'm not like buying too, too much into it. Meaning like, I'm not looking at these numbers and these names and being like, Oh, I gotta be here and I gotta go there. And like, I just want to, I want, my competition to step up in uh in difficulty every time that i step into the cage so the way i do that is by going out and winning um and winning definitively so that's my plan going forward for this next year get all these four fights in and do it in spectacular fashion um from like a other perspective uh just from like a life perspective um me and my brother uh michael he's my older brother he's in my corner uh every fight uh he's actually a mixed martial artist he doesn't have a lot of competition experience but he's like got you know three kids a wife and everything so Mm -hmm. he's always just been a very in love with training uh so me and him actually started our own little like uh small mma business if you will um not even just mma but like um uh like uh physical training strength training and stuff like that so uh, I want to get a lot of that going in terms of like building up that business a little bit, because that's something uh, that me and my brother have had, had that dream of having our own gym to own one day. And we've been talking about it for, I don't know, pretty much our whole lives, man. So I want to focus on getting that uh, running up to speed. Um, and then other than that, man, I actually want to get, uh, I'm going to get more on top of like being more active on like social media. And so like, I play a lot of like, not a lot, but I play video games. So I want to like stream my games. Oh, sure, yeah. I play Dungeons. Yeah, I play D and D and like no, Dungeons and Dragons. You can, bro. I used to play D and D with the homies, dude. That game yeah. is. You just gotta get like a good core group of D and D guys, and like that's like the time of your life. Yeah, that's the key, man. It's the key is who you're playing with. The rules. I mean, nobody ever really follows the same rules anyway. That's what I've learned with D and D. Every oh, DM God. has their own style, so. We're gonna let things slide or or not let things slide depending on who you're playing with. So, um, but yeah, man, I just wanna I wanna open up a little bit more to people. I think uh, naturally I'm a little bit more introverted, uh, which is weird. I'm like introverted in a, a personal way, like when I'm conversing with people, um, a little bit. So I wanna I wanna start kind of coming out of my shell a little bit more from like a personality perspective and like um kind of showing everybody you know like what i'm doing besides fighting because like we said we talked about before right mm-hmm. we're fighters but you're also on a human, human beings, level so. yeah we're human beings so i want to kind of i want to kind of give that side um some spotlight and some views for people out there because i feel like a it's probably gonna um attract a lot more people who are um you know who are maybe who want to connect with me or something like that um from both like uh like we said like a life perspective people who are just trying to meet other people Mm -hmm. um that kind of like align with their their morals and their style of life and then also from a fighting perspective people who want to who align with my style of fighting so i kind of want to full circle uh bring everything to bring everything together a little bit better uh in terms of like letting people know who i am and what i do so I think from a personal perspective, that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, so, yeah, man, we'll, we'll have to see how it all plays out. No, definitely, man. And I love that you mentioned Twitch, you know, like for me, I'm seeing more and more fighters get on Twitch and just streaming. Like one of my good fighter friends, Jordan Espinosa, he fought in the UFC as well. Just seeing it. Uh, yeah, I mean, Jordan. yeah, Jordan's the homie, you know, uh, quick shout out to Jordan. And, you know, it's just like um, he like plays video games and stuff. I just love watching his streams, like uh, and just being able to converse with people. Like for me, I'm a big gamer myself, so. Like, you know, if Semi and Dapper Media want to get some runs in on any game, you know, Ooh, you know the vibes, uh, I'm down. And, you know, uh, it's just been a pleasure to speak with you, Matt. Obviously, thank you so much for opening up to us. Thank you very much for just giving us the time of day. 
and uh, definitely like if you set up the Twitch, you know, we'd love to like you know watch and obviously put the fans on notice because obviously your personality is electric. I love like I just loved having this conversation with you and. I really do want to thank you for your time and like obviously for opening up to us which is the most important thing just being able to have the open dialogue without barriers so for that i can't thank you enough but uh to the fans at home i'm gonna link matt's socials in the description down below obviously he mentioned he's gonna be a bit more active on social media so who knows go say what's up to matt and maybe he'll you know he'll comment or maybe he'll follow you back or something if you're funny and witty enough or and you know uh i'm gonna link his socials down in the description this has been dan from the mma cast uh thank you so much for joining us matt and to the fans at home thank you very much for watching this has been dan from dapper media and i'm signing out have a great day guys